Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Java series. This time I'm going to teach you how to work with character extraction methods for, you know, strings in Java. Take off fast forward in a black port. Whipping all the white, even though I'm a black boy. Take cruise flexing on your cruise steroids. She looking at us like I lied down, boys. Take off fast. Alright, guys, so now that we're back and, you know, we have a fundamental understanding of how the string objects work, how to create them, and all that fun stuff. We can begin, you know, using the many, many methods that are um, that come with string objects, okay? And so the first set of methods are going to be um, character extraction methods, okay? And these methods are what you use to um, extract characters, you know, like individual characters from your uh, from your strings, okay? And this could be useful for you know some things that you might be working with, like uh, I don't know, just something, any, anything really. Maybe a program that you know has to take a certain letter out of a string. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you would do that, but I'm sure there's definitely many reasons, like if you're making algorithms and stuff, there's probably a bunch of stuff you could use for this, okay? But anyway, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is maybe get a single character from a string, okay? So let's just go ahead and make an example string here first. So string s1, we'll just call it Larry. Oops, I don't know why that went down there. Larry, just like that. And so if we want to extract maybe the third R, I mean the third letter here, the R, we could do one of these methods. So we can make a, let's put a variable to store it in. So we'll call it char letter because we're extracting one single letter. And so we want to reference the string. And then now there's a bunch of methods here, as you can see, right? And these are all the different methods that you can call upon a string object, okay? And so like I said, we're going to be extracting the one single character. And it's the first one right here, the char at uh, method, okay? And as you can see, the parameter that it wants is an integer of your index, okay? So it's going to be the index in which you can find the character. If this was an array, basically, where would you find that letter? So let's call upon that. And so we want the third one. So it's going to be two because, you know, arrays are zero based. And this is not an array. Don't get confused. But it's a string. And the way strings work in terms of characters is sometimes basically like an array, okay? So anyway, that's what... So anyway, what that's going to do is take this string here and then extract this, the character from the second uh, index, okay? And then store it in this char letter. So now let's print out the value so we can make sure that it worked. So boom, we get R. So that means it works, okay? So if we want to do Y, we can do 4 because it's the fourth one in, in the index. So let's run that and now it says y okay so that's how you extract a single character so let's add this to our little method list that we'll have here okay so we'll call it char at because that's what the method is called and then in, for a description we can say it gets a single character um, at a given index from a string pretty simple okay and so that's how you do that so now what we want to do let's say we want to get multiple characters from you know a string right we can do that. So let's make an example string, like a sentence that we could use. I am a long string, just like that. And so if we want to get multiple characters, we're going to need to store them in a character array, right? Because, because of course, if you want to have multiple of the same variable, you can probably just use an array. So char array, uh, chars for characters is equal to new char. I call it char, but you can call it character, whatever you want to call it. So we have a new char array, and as you can see here, I pre-allocated four spots in the array it's because what we're going to do here is extract the word long, okay? And so when we're, when we're using this method I'm about to show you, you have to know how many characters you want to extract from the string, okay? You have to know um, before, like ahead of time, how many you want to extract, okay? So let's go ahead and call upon this. So we'll do s2. You don't need to store it in a variable. So s2 dot, and then we could use the method. It's called get chars right there. And then there's four parameters that we need to, um, you know, put. So the first parameter is going to be where to start. What index inside of the sentence do you want to start at? Okay. So um, let's start at, let's see, long. So that would be 0, 1 for the space, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that would be the 7 index. So 7, so that's going to be where we begin. As you can see, it says source begin. And if the parameter thing goes away, just, just do control P. And now we have the source end. Oops. Now we have the source end. And don't get confused. This won't actually be where it stops. Okay. It's going to be one after it stops. So, for example, if you want to start, if you want to stop at G, then that means we need to give it the index for the space after G or the character after G. Okay. So seven, eight, 
9, 10. So 10 will be G. So we want to put 11 inside of here. So if we, oops. There we go. So yeah, we want to put 11 inside of here because the way it works is it, it's the index after where you want to stop. Okay. So that's how you do that. And so the next thing we want to put in there is the actual uh, character array where we want to store the value of this method here or the return value of this method. So it's going to be this array here. So chars. Okie dokie. And then the, finally, the last thing we want to do is specify where in the array we want to put, um, you know, the value of what this is going to be doing. And so in this case, we're just making a whole new array. It's going to have four spots. So we just want to put zero, okay? So it starts at the beginning. So if you wanted to start at a different spot in the array, you can just put, you know, whatever index you want to start it at, okay? So that's pretty simple, right? So let's go ahead and um, output um, the value of this so we can see if it worked correctly, if we extracted long correctly. So let's go ahead and put chars inside of here and see what happens. So if you output this, it says long, right? So that means it works correctly. We successfully extracted the long word from this whole string here. So that's pretty cool, right? We can extract, you know, instead of one character at a time, we can also extract um, multiple characters at one time. So that's pretty useful as you can see. And so that's how we do that. But first, let's put an explanation here. So, oops. Yeah, there we go. So get chars. And then we could say gets multiple chars from a string object. And if you're wondering if you need to be typing this too, I mean, you could if you want to get repetition. But I'm going to have a link in the description where you can check out all of the code from today's episode where you can get a good explanation. I'll have everything for you. Don't worry. So make sure you check that out in the description. So anyway, that's that's the second method we're going to be going over. And so the next two methods are going to be pretty simple. They're just um, simple methods where you can turn the whole string into an array. So this next method is when you have a string. Actually, let's go back here. Let's just keep the string that we had. So let's say we want to turn, for some reason, any reason, we want to turn this whole string into a byte array, okay? We can actually do that. So let's go ahead and make the byte array that we're going to store the value in. So byte, um, we'll call it bytes, pretty simple, is equal to, and then we could turn this into a byte array by calling upon this method here. So s2 to get, you know, the string, obviously. And then it's the method called get bytes. So as you can see here on the right side, it says byte and then the, uh, the array sign, two brackets. So that means that it returns a byte array, as you would probably know. If you don't, then that's what it does. On the right side, it tells you what it's gonna return. And so yeah, this method's gonna return a byte array. So if we do this now, that means that if we run this piece of code, it's gonna store the byte array of this string here into this new byte array that we just created, okay? So we can now then output the value of this byte array. So let's try that out. And boom, we get this weird little thing here. So that means that we can't exactly output a byte array. That doesn't quite make sense. So what we have to do, a little shortcut we could do here is if you remember, we can make a string object out of a byte array, right? So that's probably one of the uses to convert a byte array, you know, a string into a byte array because some systems don't use strings exactly. So you might want to, this complicated. But anyway, so one of the uh, shortcuts is by turning this byte array when we output it into a string, a temporary string. So we could just simply do new string and then we can just pass in, oops, and then we can just pass in the byte array because, of course, strings take byte array as a parameter. So now we can output that, and then it won't print out some gibberish. So now we get I am a long string. So that means that the contents of this byte array here were successfully translated to a string and then, you know, output it. So that means we were successfully out, uh, able to turn this string into a byte array. So that method works, okay? So that's how you do that. So I'll get bytes. And we'll say gets a byte array from a string object. Okay, cool. And then finally, we have the um, two char array. So it's the same thing pretty much. So it's going to turn this array, I mean, this string here, into a, a char array, a character array. So we're going to make that char. So char array. We'll call it um, char array. <laughs> Why not? Okay, is equal to, and then we could do this. And then we could do pretty much the same thing. So S2 to you know reference the string, and then two char array, and that's going to turn it into a character array. So then we can output the value of that just to make sure that it worked. So new string because likewise with the uh, I don't actually you might not well, let's, let's test it out. Let's see if it works without having to make a new string object. Oh, it does work. Okay, cool. So we don't have to make a temporary string. So that was pretty cool. So as you can see here, it was able to translate the string here into a character array and then store it into this variable. And then, yeah, we were probably able to print it out because characters are already, you know, I mean, it probably is pretty simple. It's just concatenation. So Java knew what to do in that case. So anyway, that's how you do that. So let's go ahead and add this to our list here. To char array gets a car away from a string object. 
And that's actually it for this episode. Um, I showed you how to extract single characters, multiple characters, and then get bytes and character arrays from your strings, okay? And so this is going to be pretty useful in the future, so it's good to have all this knowledge of how to do these certain things. And so, yeah, if you have any questions about what I showed you, um, you could ask in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. Or we have a Discord in the description, too, so make sure you check that out. Um, you know, join it, hang out with us, ask questions, whatever you want to do, anything. I probably said this like a million times already, but in the description you'll also see a link to all of the code from today's episode. I'll have it right, it's all right here. So this is what you're going to see basically. It's going to be, you know, the list that we have and then it'll have a description of every way in which you can use the methods, okay? So that's pretty useful in case you forget how to do these things in the future, okay? So anyway, if you have any questions, like I said, ask a question. And so if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.